Good day and welcome to the first episode of Driving Growth with Gronomics. Today we have got Guinea from RS Global Immigration Australia. Guinea is one of the leaders in the industry. She has grown tremendously over the last seven years and I want to hear about all of her growth story today. So Guinea, for people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about your business and don't forget to mention about how you are also participating in council elections this year. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Hello to all the viewers. This is Guinea from RS Global Immigration Australia. I am a registered migration agent. Our office is based in Lelo and I have been practicing since 2018. I am running a small to medium sized company from the past six to seven years, which is growing slowly day by day and I'm enjoying that growth. Yes, I do want to mention about the council elections, I am contesting from South Ward in the Mitchellshire Council. So in case if you live in the area Beveridge or Wallen, you will see my name on the ballot paper. And please support, please vote. Thank you. Now, that's great, Kenny. So that's a great introduction. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this industry. Sure. I did mention briefly previously too that I've started this business back in 2018. I arrived in Australia in 2007. I studied Bachelors of Accounting from Central Queensland University and I was working as an assistant accountant with a migration law firm. That's when I realized that there is some sort of gap in the market which I will be able to fulfill if I become a migration agent. That's when I decided to do this particular course. Once I finished my course, I was very clear on the point that I'm going to start my own business, which I did back in 2018, from home, from a small room to garage to an office and now to a bigger office. Thank you. No, that's great. Right. So, Guinea, uh, that journey of migrating or rather transitioning from a accountant or accounting background to migration is way different. What prompted you? Why did you think there was a space for another migration agent in the industry? Sure. Um, when, as I said previously, that, you know, I, I was working as an assistant accountant in a migration law firm. So I could actually see the gaps very clearly, to mm. be honest, rather than, you know, hearing it from people, I could see the gaps in the market while working with a migration agent. Mm. I realized that there is a need of more customized or tailored solutions mm. to clients' problems. I realized that, you know, um, there are so many people who are sometimes not able to express themselves because the person they are speaking to while getting a consultation is not patient enough to listen to them. Mm. And I thought that rather than just providing one solution to everybody, it's a ta it's the ta it was the time to give them more tailored and customized solutions to their problems. Right. And specifically, like, I know that you do migration for a lot of popular artists coming from overseas. Uh, so how did you get to do that? That's very interesting. And uh, I th I'm sure everyone would like to hear, you know, some of the most uh, astonishing stories that you've got to say about some of the artists that you've organized visas for. Sure. Um, I think a lot of people could um, would do already know that I go to a lot of events where a lot of artists are there and I meet, get to meet the organizers of those events. That's when, you know, you get into that conversation that we are planning another event and we would want to call this particular artist. With all due respect to them, I want to say one thing that the artists they invite here, when we have to process their visas, um, sometimes it's a bit of struggle for us because we feel that we really don't know how to um, address that particular person because they are very very popular they've got mm. a lot of fame mm. and sometimes you feel reluctant getting your team involving into that particular procedure because you feel that oh what if you know that person if we follow up for documents how would that person react so it was not easy to get into that sort of um, entertainment visas because it involves a person who is already at a very good or a very high position and then you are doing their visas, so you have to be very mindful of how how you interact with them, how many times you can take the follow up. Mm. But it has been very interesting, and it has been a learning curve curve for myself and for for my team. We we started doing it just because I was attending, as I said, mm. quite a lot of events, and then I got in conversation with a lot of organizers, and 
we actually love doing that now and some of the artists are so humble and they are ready to help you in whatever way we we need to to get their visas done so gini can you tell us about some of the more famous or popular artists that you worked with sure very recently we did visa for sargi man she is uh, one of the very popular punjabi artist prior to that we have been migration partners for sargun mehta she is also a punjabi artist um uh, before that also we have done quite a few one of one of the artists was a new name um in the industry she is she's from canada her name is sumit dilloy but she was she was you know it was really nice working with a new artist who is going to emerge in the near future mm-hmm. after that we've met so many artists as in we haven't done their visas but we have been their visa partners as in we have accommodated to their other visa needs but not specifically bringing them here for mm. example debi maksuspuri um he has also he's also very well known in the punjabi industry and we have um we've um guided him with some of his visa issues right okay now tell me does this help in terms of marketing working with some of the popular names does it help you get your brand out there does it help you get your name out there and does that bring in new clients yes absolutely uh when we do the visas for the artists they do actually spread the name because once their visas are approved they they do a lot of marketing activities for us for example putting a post on their page um for example making a short video and posting it on social media it does create a lot of impact and it does generate a lot of business as well fantastic now gini i know you said you know you've grown over the years the business has grown to now have so many more employees talk us about that growth talk to us about how challenging was that and what are the biggest challenges when you're growing a small business sure um see it it is not easy when you are a small business owner you are the one who has to focus on marketing you are the one who has to look after the accounting side of it mm-hmm. you are the one who has to maintain the client relationship as well and you are the one who have to maintain good relationship with the employees too each aspect of the business has to be looked after by the business owner if you are a small to medium sized business owners put aside the big owners who who have hr managers who have marketing managers we we don't so we work overnights you know we we have sleepless nights when we have to make a plan of what to do next because yeah. migration itself is a very volatile industry as in everything is changing so rapidly at night the changes are announced and in the morning it's it's everywhere on social media and you need to cope up with those changes mm. so you do need good systems in place mm. when i say good systems in place as in your it system has to be strong if you have a marketing plan in place you may have to, you have to be very quick you have to act on it in case if it requires changes you really need a good accounting team as well to look at the numbers as in what you are making how much more you can spend there's a lot of competition in the market it's not easy to survive but every day each day when you work hard you don't have to worry about the outcome or the fruits it comes on its own mm-hmm. on on that point kenny uh um, now with more employees more staff more processes when you do that you also want to make sure you hire the right people and part of that is they represent the same culture they fit into the company culture and it doesn't feel like this person doesn't belong here so how do you ensure that like what you said you provide a lot more customized service your visa process is for people who have very custom needs now in that kind of situation how do you ensure your new staff can also cater for that so sure. we have um sort of um, a set questions which we ask when we are hiring mm-hmm. the most important thing which i emphasize on is you got to be very ethical mm-hmm. and honest mm mm-hmm. put aside professionalism put aside being punctual all of that is i feel that it's the part of the your it's part of your job being professional being punctual mm. even being ethical and honest is part of your job but i think that's more of your values mm. and we emphasize more on value because we try to create value for the client as well mm. so we do have set questions which we ask while we are hiring mm. and they are more focused towards the values mm. so that is very interesting gani uh 
with all that growth that's come about it's not easy you know you've got two very young children uh, one of them is as old as my daughter uh, just over three years so tell me you know how do you manage so many different things in in the time that you have available because it's not easy so what do you do um, we hear a lot of things about work-life balance that you know we got to have work-life balance to be honest it's first of all I just want to address what work-life balance is it's mm. about you know how you juggle between your family life and your professional life now when it comes to juggling between the both at times it does get imbalanced because sometimes mm. you start giving more time to your work and mm. other events and other social things you do mm. and then at times um, you know, you are at home with your kids, with your family, having more family time. Mm. See, what I personally try to do is try to have some boundaries and have some discipline in life. That helps you to maintain. I'm not saying that I do it perfectly, but I try to have boundaries with so many things as in if I'm going out, I know that I need to be home by 9, 9.30 mm. if I'm going somewhere after work. Mm. Before kids, like my younger one goes to bed around 9, 9.30, I try mm. to be there for him. But when it comes to some work commitments which have to be um, later in the evening, for example, some social events which we go to, that's also related to work. Maybe we've sponsored that event and mm. sometimes we have to stay. Then I make sure that, you know, I am at home over the weekend. So having a balance of and honestly you'll never be like okay this is perfect there's mm. no such thing as being perfect yep. but you just you know may try to maintain that okay now that i have been out monday tuesday wednesday i make sure that thursday friday saturday sunday mm. i am at home mm. so trying to create a balance is what life is all about mm. not having a perfect i don't think we i'll be able to find even one person who would have a perfect work-life balance mm. Mm. So that is that is great. You talked about how sometimes you've got commitments and you have to be out as well. One of the things you already mentioned was how you are very strong with the networking. You're there in so many different events. With with so much networking, how do you make sure you make the most out of that networking opportunity? I'm sure a lot of small business owners struggle with networking they can't put an roi on some uh, something like that it's a marketing activity which you can't put a number on so how do you go about that how do you say you know what i'm going to spend x number of hours a week or whatever you know and then how do you make sure that you get the most out of that sure so um again i just want to say one thing sometimes you do think that i'm going to put let's say five to eight hours on marketing this week mm. but then you end up spending 10 to 12 hours or sometimes you just spend three to four hours mm. uh, there is no right or wrong but yes if, if i've made a commitment and to make the most out of it prior to going to any particular social event i know the people i am going to meet i know i try to do the research when i say i know the people it's not the audience but the other stakeholders the other sponsors who are um there who have sponsored the event who are just going to sit next to us so i try to find out who those people are mm. if i know them do they know about me because mm. it's not always be, it will not always be like that i know them and they would know me too exactly. that's not the case so yep. i look at the fact that okay these are the people to whom i don't know maybe i can go and speak to them and market our services mm. and then at that time they also feel obliged that you know we they do the same thing in mm. return mm. but sometimes they just hesitate from initiating that conversation it is yeah. always difficult to start the conversation with someone mm. but once you master that skill you, you find it easy yep. so i try to do my homework beforehand before going to the event to mm. see what who else is coming who are mm. the stakeholders who are the other sponsors how is the audience going to be like and you um make your mind that way you dress up appropriately based on the occasion i do promote a lot of cultural events so mm -hmm. you know once you are dressed up culturally people could easily connect rather than going there with you know not culture appropriate that's what i feel yep yep that's perf that makes perfect sense so gini as a you know when you started out you would not have known all of these things you've probably learned along the way correct and i want to ask you this do you invest in your own learning cuz without learning new things you can't really grow your small business so do you invest in your own learning and if so what are the most important or what are the most beneficial learning channels for yourself whether it's a book whether do you listen to something 
do you get mentorship uh, tell me about that how do you how do you educate yourself constantly every day we learn and every day is a new challenge to cope up with that professionally we do have a set amount of continued professional development training hours which we have to meet to be continued um to reg- to be registered with the uh, migration agents office and when it comes to apart from those number of hours there are so many other ways we learn first we attend a lot of webinars where they talk about business growth personal growth having a proper crm system in place mm-hmm. that creates a lot of um, when you when you have a crm and you talk about leads you can actually rate the lead in the mm-hmm. crm which helps you you can leave um detailed notes once we've done the consultation we know if it is a hot lead or a cold lead we have got the notes mm. there sometimes the client does not return straight away sometimes mm. they come back to you for another service after years but mm. once you know that that client i met and these are the notes because you won't be able to remember everything for a long time yes. considering the number of clients we have yep. so those notes and that crm system helps you a lot and having upgrades in that crm system helps you grow more for example in our current crm system we have um sort of got in another system which reminds you of things because of the busy schedule sometimes you forget things and that reminder actually helps us a lot and the team as well mm-hmm. and then apart from that i would say yes you can read i used to love reading but i don't find much time anymore and uh, there was this book about um the monk who sold his ferrari by robin sharma i read that book which clearly tells you about focusing on your inner health your inner peace as well rather than just being outside in the world being social that is the part of the life but your own inner spiritual health has to be strong as well so that you can survive and fight against the odds mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that is that is very important what what he just mentioned um i want to understand with that what does success or what does growth really mean to you because when you consider your inner health your mental peace which is a very big thing nowadays everyone's talking about mental health true what i want to understand is what or how do you define success and how do you define growth in your small business um it's it's a you know it's a small question but it has a very deeper meaning i feel um success i define as if you are happy and you have a happy family you are already successful and when i say happy family and you are happy of course that includes so many factors you would have a happy family and you'll be happy if you are achieving things day by day if you are trying to learn day by day when i say achieving things it does not have to be big targets mm-hmm. let's say that i thought i am going to get home early this evening mm. by 5 or 10 minutes and if i do that i think that will make me happy if i think that when i wake up i'm going to make my bed and i do that that makes me happy so those we always look at happiness in bigger things but it can actually be find, found in very mm. very small things and that is what which will lead you to mm. towards success Mm. So doing small things day by day you'll not even realize that you you're becoming successful day by day yep. and you're growing day by day yep. not if i say that i'm going to get home an hour early from today i i clearly know i won't be able to do it so having realistic targets can make you grow day by day mm. that is that is very good yeah um so kenny if i asked you there are a lot of small business owners out there some of them women with young children in a similar position as yourself if you were to give them any kind of tips or insights that would help them grow their small business uh, i'm sure a lot of people look up to you for inspiration as well what advice would you give someone in your shoes i would tell everybody that when you start doing something it is very very uncomfortable when you get into something new it's very uncomfortable just embrace that uncomfort zone keep doing it every day and trust me within those span of 2 to 3 weeks or a month or 2 months you will start to have those things on your tips and you'll start to feel comfortable change is never easy so if you think you're going to start a new business today it is going to be a big change in your life 
and initially you'll be very very uncomfortable mm -hmm. you'll feel as you know why did i even start this why did i get myself into this i should you know i should continue to work for someone else then i don't have to worry about this mm -hmm. but trust me when you are in that uncomfortable situation that means it is leading you towards growth mm -hmm. when you feel that okay i tried to do this particular task but i couldn't accomplish embrace the failure and just say that's okay if i failed no problems mm -hmm. let me try again and stay away from those people who tell you that you can't do it or just tell them that you know i'm taking my time please give me some space there is always help available in whatever you do seek for help so that you can achieve that particular task and you can attain growth on the point of help gini um for all the listeners all the viewers out there if anyone wants to reach out to you for help how can they do that so um if anyone wants to reach us for help for any sort of visas inquiries you can call us on 0452229777 we have just moved to a new office and our new address is 1/33 may road in lelaw you can you'll have to book a consultation and you, you can meet us in person apart from that in case if you think that you just want to speak to me about something for example sometimes we do hear from a lot of people who want to do migration law still come and speak to us i am i'm more than happy to guide you and i always always support my colleagues and people who want to get into the industry so that you know they know the ins and outs beforehand mm -hmm. so gini if i asked you give us give us in brief just give us bullet points of some of the things that you think are essential for a small business to grow in 2024 maybe the business is similar to yours maybe it's a different business uh maybe it's uh, a man maybe it's a woman uh with children you know whoever it is coming from different backgrounds different different history if you have to give them any kind of insights or tips that will help them grow their business in 2024 what would those things be those things would be uh be ready to accept any change which may come your way the world is the world is changing rapidly so you got to be prepared for it mm. having a good crm system in your business can help you grow a lot mm. having good marketing techniques mm. keeping up to date with the technology can help you grow a lot mm. time management skills if you can sort of you know if not master you at least try to meet certain targets with deadlines you'll grow and that will help you a lot so time management is very very important be disciplined when you try to do things for example if you're trying to do something on the computer don't just look at your phone or any other screen try to do that thing first we know especially females we love multitasking even i do at times when you're not multitasking you feel like you know you just can't focus on one thing but if you start with 5 to 10 minutes focusing on just one thing and not multitasking i think you'll be able to achieve a lot of out of it mm. do look after the accounting aspect of your business as well mm. if you really don't know how to read the balance sheet or a profit and loss statement that's fine go to an accountant but try to understand how you are going to meet the growing needs of the business having a good plan time management a good crm system can help you a lot with a small business you said something interesting over there i know that you were meant to go off but this is a this is a question i have to ask sure you talk you talked about check with your accountant if you're ready for the growth i know a lot of small business owners have been in a situation where they've taken on growth that they couldn't manage what indicators or what should a business person look for to make sure they're ready for that growth they are accounting they are operational they are marketing and their own personal time they have all of those things available to enable that growth how does someone look for that what are the indicators um if you have got a lot of work to finish and you're not able to manage on your own and but you were previously able to do so because let's say previously only had 10 clients but now you know you have 20 clients mm. so having good man force next to you mm. or when you know that you need to hire one two or three employees for mm. yourself that mm. clearly indicates that you are growing mm. 
if you think that you know you have sufficient money lying in your account and if you hire a particular person you'll be able to meet the overheads that clearly shows that you know you're growing mm. once you understand the criteria of how the pnl the profit and loss statements and balance sheet works mm. and it towards the end of the year you know that okay this is what my profit is going to be and if i spend this much money out of my profit on hiring people and having a good system in place mm. that that clearly shows that you're growing mm. and you know i i actually heard in one of the podcast as well once you know you have hit as you're going growing <laughs> which i thought is somewhat true but yeah Yeah. I just thought to mention. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's that's absolutely true. So, um yeah, thank you so much for time today, Gini. I think you've been tremendous. I appreciate the time you've given us. I'm sure the viewers will also appreciate the insights you shared from your growth, your story. Um yeah, so thank you so much and hopefully we'll see you again. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.